Good morning, everybody who couldn't come to see us this year because you were all sheltering in place. I'm Julie from the Santa Lucia Conservancy, and I am here with Kirsten, Kirsten. listening to the sound of a wren and watching the wren approach the bird box. It's a good introduction to our class today. We're going to be talking today about this special ecosystem that we have here in, in this riparian area. Those are some words we're going to talk about. So we're going to cover some big concepts. We're going to talk about food webs and food chains and how the plants that are here are unique. And that's what we're going to do. So follow us up the trail. And as we go up the trail today, we're going to be showing you all kinds of special things about this riparian canyon part of the Carmel River watershed. So join us. So here we are walking down our trail of Potrero Canyon and you can see the mountain right here behind you. We are in the Santa Lucia Mountain. In an ecosystem you have the living things but you also have the non-living things. Well what are some examples of the non-living things? We have the weather that changes from day to day. We have the soil. We have the sun. We have the atmosphere, which can include pollution, which fortunately we do not have here, but that's definitely a factor in some places. So ecology, that big word, is the study of ecosystems. The stream ecosystem. The place where plants and animals live is called a habitat, and the group of plants and animals that live there is called a community. Plants and animals of a community interacting with each other and with the air, soil, water, sunlight, and climate form an ecosystem. Plants and animals of an ecosystem are linked together by their feeding relationships. So when we talk about an ecosystem, one of the most important things to think about is how energy moves through an ecosystem. An ecosystem is complicated. It's both the living and the non-living things in a place. And we're standing here in a forest that has so many plants. Everything from the small grasses to the shrubs to the tall trees. And it's all connected. So it starts with the sun. The sun is producing the energy that only plants are able to take and use to make food. We can't stick out our arms and make food. But a plant with its green leaves takes the sun's energy and it's like a little factory. They make food, which they spread throughout their plant. And when something eats that, so the plant, backing up a little, is the producer. It is producing the food. It is then consumed by an insect, an animal, something that's a plant eater. And that in turn gets consumed by something that eats that creature. Every time something the energy passes, for example, from a plant to a caterpillar, 90% of the energy is lost. It doesn't all move on. So if you move on two more levels, you've lost 90% each time. And finally, you end with the decomposers. The decomposers take everything that's left, and that might be a dead animal or a dead plant, and they recycle it and decompose it back into the earth, which then becomes nutrients that the plants use. All living things are made of carbon. It is also a part of the ocean, air, and rocks. Because the earth is a dynamic place, carbon does not stay still. In the atmosphere, carbon is attached to oxygen in a gas called carbon dioxide, or CO2. Plants use CO2 and sunlight to make their own food and grow. The carbon becomes part of the plant, and when they die and are buried, they turn into fossil fuels made of carbon. Underneath our board today, we have some mushrooms, which is the non-science word for a fungus. These are a perfect example of decomposition. They're taking the organic matter from the rotting leaves that are decaying and using that to grow. You notice they're not green, so they do not make food from the sun. They don't photosynthesize. They're getting their food from the rotting vegetation. This is the forest floor. 
and you can see there's a lot of down wood and a lot of plants that grow here and a lot of habitat for our smaller creatures that live here. We have a lot of amphibians, salamanders, Well, being spring, we have a lot of growth and sometimes along with that growth, we get wildflowers that are attracting the pollinators. A lot of insects are here. So some of them are being drawn to these beautiful Douglas iris that are here because it is a shady area. This is what we call a riparian area near water. This is our coastal live oak. And if you can see, there's a lot of predation on the leaves. There's thousands of insects that lay their eggs on our oak trees. Our oak trees also produce acorns. And energy cannot be recycled in ecosystems. Instead, energy flow through an ecosystem, changing form as organisms metabolize, produce waste, eat one another, and eventually die and decompose. So we are on our bridge and we have pictures hanging on our side of our bridge of the animals that are caught on film by our secret remote wildlife camera that detects movement. So when the animals walk by, it takes pictures of them. And right here, we have a picture of an herbivore. Here is a black-tailed mule deer that was caught on film right at the end of our bridge. And they love to eat all the plants in here and they eat acorns. They're an example of one of our herbivores. They are a plant eater. Biological diversity, or more commonly called biodiversity, is the different kinds of plants, animals, and other living things. These different kinds of plants, animals, and other living things are different species. For an ecosystem to be healthy, it is generally thought that it needs to have high biodiversity. And a scrub in the background. We've got a noisy scrub jay talking to us, and I'm standing underneath a very smelly tree, the bay tree. You might know about this tree. Very strong smelling leaves. It likes shade. So it likes to be in the shade of the redwood trees and the oak trees and the cottonwoods and the sycamores. Wood rats use bay leaves. Rats are very intelligent. They bring their leaves into their nests, their stick nests, where they have cozy little homes inside there. They have rooms for their food and rooms for their babies. And they bring bay leaves intentionally in there to keep the pests out of their food to protect their food source. Dusky footed wood rats eat the leaves, twigs, berries, seeds of more than 70 plant species adapting to whatever is available in a given area. Each individual animal specializes in three or four local foods. They especially favor acorns. A lot of owls mostly are barn owl that lives up high in the thickets. The reason that owls are here is because these trees are here. This is their home. This is where they live. So because we have a creek right here, we have water and that's why the redwoods grow here. Hello, here's an example of a food web. So energy moves through the system, starting with the sun. Plants convert the sun's energy into food. So all of our different plants that we have in our watershed, we have a high diversity of different kinds of plants that live here. And so we have all these different kinds of creatures from these invertebrates. We have earthworms, centipedes, spiders, larvae, pill bugs, banana slugs. We've got different kinds of insects, flies, bees, moths, butterflies, dragonflies, damselflies. We have different kinds of amphibians. Um, we have frogs, salamanders. We have different kinds of reptiles from small lizards and snakes that live in our 
plants, and then we have all of these different animals that eat these things. So, we so if we start with a plant making a seed, and let's say a mouse or a rat eating that seed like an acorn, and then the owl will eat the rat. That is a simple food chain all the way up. So this is a simple example of a food web with all those different food chains. And this is how energy moves up the trophic levels from the sun to the primary producer, the plants, through the first level, the second level, and up to the top where the barn owl is the top, at the top of the food chain. Well, here's an interesting sight. Don't think of redwoods as being necessarily great habitat for wild turkeys, but there's a little group right in there where we go. You can see the movement. Oh, we've got the big boy turkey off to the left. He's got his feathers all fanned out. Let's see if I can get closer. Do you hear them? You hear another bird flapping his wings up in the tree. Can you hear the sound of the water? Very close to the creek, walking into our little redwood grove, which is behind our benches in our teaching area. Looks curious. Turkeys are trying to stay away from me, of course. Let's see if I can sneak up behind them. Of course, they're always looking for predators, and they consider me a predator, so. I'm not going to be able to get too close. There's our big boy turkey with his feathers all fanned out behind him, his tail. There they are. Just meandering down the same exact path that we walk on when you come out with us. Biodiversity. We have high biodiversity here because we have so many different kinds of plants and animals that live in Potrero Canyon.